Before we get into the Vortex, I'd like to let you know that if you go to churchmilitant.com, you can get so much more than just the Vortex. If you're Catholic, you need to know your faith, and we at churchmilitant.com want to help you learn all about our beautiful Catholic Church. Now, if you're not Catholic, you should open up your mind to what our Lord has to offer through his church. So I'd like to invite you to visit churchmilitant.com to learn more about what it means to be Catholic. After this Vortex, I hope to see you there. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. It's said that oftentimes when there's a family member who is a severe alcoholic or someone who is addicted to drugs or another suffering from strong emotional illness, that the whole family life swirls around that issue. And yet, quite frequently, it is never addressed head on. It's the great elephant in the living room. Everyone knows it. No one wants to open a door because a zillion awful things will come falling out. So a very awkward balance is struck where the truth is ignored so that all the heavy lifting never has to be done. But the problem is, it is the nature of truth to be known. It cannot be ignored forever. Sooner or later, it comes roaring out of its prison. As we look around the landscape of Christianity today, especially with all the mouth over Martin Luther, we see the same scenario. The elephant everyone knows, but no one wants to acknowledge. The elephant is the identity of Jesus Christ. One religion understands him as he is in himself. All the others misunderstand him, even if they correctly perceive some things of him. What Luther's revolt did was to introduce into Christianity the errant and deadly notion, spiritually deadly notion, that Christ can be understood from contradictory perspectives. This is not true. It is the lie at the heart of Protestantism, which those in this fight understand but few want to address. For example, some Protestants accept that Christ embraces abortion. Other Protestants are revulsed by such an understanding of Christ. Some, in fact many, believe in a Christ who accepts divorce and remarriage, even though he explicitly himself condemned the evil. The same with same-sex marriage, women clergy, the necessity of baptism, the nature of the Eucharist, the role of Mary in salvation history, praying to saints, the need for confession, once saved, always saved, justification, grace, the existence of hell, the list never ends. For every denomination of Protestantism, and there are 40,000 of them and counting, there is a contradictory and competing understanding of who Jesus Christ is. This cannot be. There cannot be a Christ who accepts that abortion is a good, who also at the same time accepts that it's an evil. Yet these contradictions are the result of the Protestant heresy, plain and simple. Protestantism denies all authority beyond personal interpretation of Scripture. So how could any other result be the case? The illogic of competing Christs is the logical outcome of the Protestant heresy. To expect any other outcome is naive beyond naive. Truth is one, and it cannot be anything else by its nature. Now, we here at Church Milton are constantly called mean and divisive and uncharitable for pointing directly at the elephant in the room because this elephant has come stampeding into the Catholic Church and almost no one in the church wants to address it. It's far easier to slam the message than to deal with the truth behind it. Protestantism is a heresy and to the extent that it has entered the church and has been accepted on a practical level, it has become a poison. Today, we have Catholics who say they believe in Christ, yet they accept abortion or contraception or divorce and remarriage and same-sex marriage and so forth. And many of these are clerics. There's only one Christ because he is the truth. And for many, that is a very uncomfortable proposition because like the door that no family wants to open on the suffering family member who is a drunk or addicted or has emotional problems, they know that when that door is opened, a zillion things are going to come tumbling out. Many, many people will have to admit, for example, that they have been wrong for decades, even their whole lives, 
and they share some blame in the spiritual destruction of many. Very few are, pre are prepared to go there, so they stay where they are, which is, in the end, living a lie. Martin Luther was a liar. Whatever his motivations, leave those to God to judge. He was a liar, and he unleashed a devastating lie on the whole Christian world. Now, 500 years later, what are we left with? 40,000 Christs. 40,000 plus one. And that one is the only true one, and that one is the Christ of the Catholic Church, which he personally established. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Hello, Militant. Thank you for checking out today's Vortex. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest that needs to be talked about and known about in the Catholic world. Be sure to stay connected to everything going on by heading to our website, churchmilitant.com. We've got lots of educational and one-of-a-kind Catholic content that you won't see anywhere else. Follow all of our social media channels as well. You can find those links right below this video. So we'll see you on the next Vortex, and God love you.